Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we are back with another brand new video. Today's video, I'm sitting here kinda in disbelief and sorry if the flow and everything is slightly off because the way that game ended and the penalty kick I've just seen given has honestly confused every single fibre in my being. And I think given that fact and the fact that I am absolutely scunnered up here with the way that game ended, we may as well just roll in to the game recap because yes, on paper it is a 1-1 draw. It doesn't really hurt us in any way. It only hurts the people that love just to see Rangers win, like myself. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people clicking on today's video that want to see Rangers winning every single game. And that's the way I always feel, ladies and gentlemen. But it is a game that was always going to be looked upon as a wee taster for what's to come at the weekend. And I think you saw two different approaches for this game. You had St. Johnson on one side playing at their best team. And to be fair to them, could they have played any better in that game? Honestly, for me, that's probably about the best that St. Johnson can play in that game. They hunted in packs, they, they burst their arse, they, they chased every single ball and they never gave Rangers time to breathe or dictate the football. Like, literally never. As soon as we got in the ball, they were after us with the full pitch press that we obviously faced versus Hamilton just after Christmas. And it was kind of similar the way the games actually played out with Hamilton getting a last minute or last second equaliser on the same in this game, but I just thought the way that they set up and the way they approached this game kind of perfectly fit with how we went in to this game, making so many changes, and again, we all knew changes were going to be made, we were excited about some of the changes, but I don't think any of us were expecting seven changes to be made in this game of football, and it's just, it's one of them, the perfect summary of Rangers in this game is, it looked like we made seven changes, that smoothness, that kind of, everybody's a cog in this winning ruthless Rangers machine, just didn't he? quite fit and you could see a couple of players were trying to get up to speed and again that's what these games have to be used for now getting players and projects some minutes some valuable game time to get them a little bit better and I think that's the way it went for Rangers very sluggish very out of sync very clunky in the ball and again that just fed perfectly into the way St Johnson approached this game and I think that summarises perfectly the first 15 minutes of this game where we were trying to figure things out but St. Johnson weren't letting us, they were coming after us and coming after us. And we could, if we're just being honest, be 2-0 doing in the opening 50 minutes. Uh, going into the very first chance for St. Johnson, actually, it was a corner kick where we've been so strong defensively. Like, you think about it the whole season, we barely gave anybody anything. Everyone knows where to be, everyone knows where to stay up. But we actually get caught in that set piece because we're trying to tell people where to go. The guys that's no played a lot of football, you need to be here, you need to be here. And St. Johnson could see that and they just played a quick we want into the mixer and they got a free shot six yards out from a set piece. That never happens versus us. But thankfully that was eventually saved because it was kind of shot directly out our boy John McLaughlin. And that clunkiness continued because less than a minute later, a simple run in behind, running away from Jack Simpson, in behind Connor Golson resulted in a brilliant through ball, I think from Liam Craig. And the finish is absolutely brilliant as well as he lifts it over John McLaughlin. But thankfully that chance there was offside because you're thinking to yourself, right, they've just had a free shot seven yards out. They've just scored, but thankfully it's offside. Now's the time to wake up, Rangers, and shake off that rust, please. But unfortunately it wasn't meant to be, and maybe it was never ever possible to make that happen because less than two minutes after they put the ball in the back of the net, we try to step up with Tavernier, Golton and Barisic all making a clever move to go forward. But our boy Jackie Simpson, again, he's no go a lot of game times. No, in sync with the boys, and he actually stays back, and that allows... St. Johnson to get a 2v1 in behind, but to be fair to Simpson here, he does very well with his recovery speed to get back and he stops Stevie May, who's trying to pass it um, across the goal so the guy can tap in. Good bit of recovery defending there, but again, that summarises the game for me. And I think that's what we're going to have to take for this game. Yes, it's never it's never great no winning games of football, but that was them at their actual best with probably the, the team that we will face at the weekend. But that's certainly no us. Out our best, and it's certainly not the team that will be playing 
in this cup quarter final. So let's not react, ladies and gentlemen, because you still saw moments from Rangers in this game because the next chance actually fell to us after some wonderful work by Tavernier down the right. He gives it to Hadji, who floats across to the back post. And Jack Simpson, a minute or two after getting that vital interception, should actually burst the net here, but unfortunately floats it over. But missed chance or not, at least it was us creating things. And 10 minutes after that, you had Kamal Roof with probably the moment of the first half showing his real quality where he drops all the way back to the halfway line and he turns and hits a wonderful through ball in behind the defence to Scott Wright who takes a good first touch but he can't put the ball in the back of net. That ball really deserved the finish for Scotty Wright but I guess he made it up to us in the second half. But I speak in the second half, that's where we need to go next ladies and gentlemen because there's nothing else in the entire first half. No, I'm not kidding. I mean the best part of what was remaining of that first half was the guy at half time for St Johnson cutting about with the full St Johnson gear on, work boots on instead of football bits, tea at the bottom, noodles at the top, he was sitting munching away, spilling tea at his nipples and he was just cutting about at half time enjoying life. That there was the only thing that was worth noting in the last 20 minutes of that first half going in to the second. But besides that bonafide legend, the second half did come and thankfully we saw an improvement from Rangers and it was an improvement in the middle of the part where we started to see more drive because to me it felt like it was only Stephen Davis in the middle and that's not me taking a shot at Glenn Kamara here, I'm just talking about driving us forward and getting on it. Kamara done it once or twice but it was Davis that was sprinkling about but again I just didn't feel like the two in the centre of the part worked because they e easily overran us and Liam Craig was sitting here cutting a boot like prime bashing Swinestagger getting on the ball intercepting blocking everything and he was doing my absolute gonads in if I'm being honest but as I said there, there was an improvement there was more directness there was more drive in the second half and there was more people committing to going forward and that's actually how we got the breakthrough in this game just shy of the 55th mark where Stephen Davis just goes hold on it's time for me to put my cape on once again. A couple of days shy of scoring an overheat kick in an old firm after having played 44 matches at the age of 40, <laughs> 46, 36, sorry, Steve-O. He's at the age of 36, playing 44 matches. A couple of days after scoring an old firm, he then goes, no, I'm not letting this happen. I'm not letting us be this lethargic. He just runs with the ball, puts pressure on, forces St. Johnson into a mistake, and then he's got the powerful drive forward towards the box, he doesn't have faff about, pass it sideways, no, drive straight to the box, sees Scotty Wright with the outside of his eye, and it's a nice little kiss pass to your boy Scotty Wright, but this is where quality shines, and you talk about these type of games where it's always going to be quite sluggish, but when you get a chance, go ahead and show you've got a wee bit of quality, and you deserve mere game time to get up to it, Scott Wright, this is his moment in the game, and I think he needed it as well because Davis doesn't put this on a plate for him it's a simple pass outside the box but what Wright does is he stops the ball dead he waits for the defenders to come up and then opens his body up and so nonchalantly curls it and finesses it past the goalkeeper that is quality there and this is what these types of game and these amount of changes are for all. seeing who has these moments and for me Scotty Wright with such a beautiful finish reminded us all that there is a real player in there, and yes, it will be a project, but by God, will the payoff be worth it. And, may I just add, by the way, if you're ever looking for an omen on whether or not Scott Wright will be a player for Rangers, what minute did he score in? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, oh my sweet, 55. But every game's an education, and every moment's a chance to learn, and just a couple of minutes after he went ahead and scored his first goal for Rangers on the 55th, minute where he's just an absolute hero status because we aren't necessarily playing at our best and he's dragged us and put us ahead in the game. He has a moment at the back end. This one originally gets whipped into the back post. He tries to like clear it with his heat. I've tried to lift up there. Oh my God, I can't even get the... Oh no, I need to start working out. I can't even lift it. Look at this. Huh? Cry kid. Mars. Anyway, he tries to... I'm embarrassed by that. He tries to lift his leg up and kind of heal it away and it ends up like kissing his arm when it's at his chest. And originally, if you go back and you look at it, the referee originally points for a corner kick. Then Rooney just goes in his face and goes, Rawr. again, just want to point out that's not a direct quote, but it sounded very similar to what he did. He just went up there and screamed directly in his face and the referee absolutely shot himself and just went, 
penalty kick. So from corner to penalty kick, from one squeal from angry bald man. And during that, though, the second he gave that penalty kick, the linesman sitting gone like this, like he's at a concert for Oasis in the late 90s, ladies and gentlemen. He's proper gone for it. And he signals the referee and says, what the f*** have you just done there? This is what's actually happened. And then the referee waves off the penalty based on the feedback he got from the linesman. And this is where my problems start to come again with the Scottish officials. He's not seen whether or not that is a penalty. He's gave that based on the reactions. Then when he's actually heard what happened from the linesman, he's changed his mind. That shouldn't be what happens. You should only give a penalty kick if you're 100% sure it's a penalty kick. And you actually saw the damn thing. No based on reactions. The referee made an absolute arse of that. And yes, people can scream conspiracies and all that if they want, but they're very quiet based on what... No, sorry. They aren't very quiet based on the bullshit penalty get in because this is what they do, right? Oh, uh, well... We deserve that. After the two other penalties, we should have fought. And that's the problem. Right, did you see that? Do you know what I mean? Like, when they didn't get a penalty, it's a conspiracy. But when they did get one, well, we should have had one in this game or this game. So, it equals out. Pish, ladies and gentlemen. It's a conspiracy when you want it to be a conspiracy. But anyway, after this madness from the referee, I don't know if he started to feel the pressure because he started to ruin the game. And I'm talking about ruin the game for both sides. Not just for Rangers or not just for St. Johnson, because every foul started to become a yellow card. I mean, then, when players were on a yellow card, they would just ignore blatant fouls. I mean, Jermaine Defoe got wiped out, and I mean wiped out, ladies and gentlemen, like you're playing bulldogs on the playground. He just absolutely nailed them from behind, yet somehow he goes and plays on. How can you play on when our players been took out and now St. Johnson's got the boys? Is they saying Defoe's dived? I don't understand what how he can play on. For that, he just completely lost control of the game. And that's for both sides as well, because it went from yellow card and everybody to no giving fouls. And it just started to boil and boil and boil up and boil up. And then it started to come into the last 15, 20 minutes, where again, the other two penalty incidents happened. Now, the first of the two late penalty shouts came in the 86th minute of the game, where they have a shot from outside the box. There's a kind of bouncing shot, and this thing's gone so far wide. I mean, the goals are here. It's gone this way because it's trying to catch the subway so it can get him early because it's a part of hashtag subway freaking loyal. And I think that catches Simpson off guard, if I'm honest with you. But you can quite clearly see Simpson's gone like that, and he's trying to put his arm backwards. Now, I've seen people saying, aye, but he's leaning his shoulder downwards towards the football. No, when you do that, your shoulder naturally... Goes, I feel like, am I taking crazy pills, or have I seen this wrong? Is there a different angle that I need to see? He's quite clearly putting his arm down like that, and it naturally hits him or clips him, like here. Where's he supposed to put his arm? Up his ass. But I guess I didn't care what consists of a penalty anymore, because I just said that one for me isn't a penalty kick, but it's more of a penalty kick than the one that they actually get, so I don't know, <laughs> like he's generally, honestly... I just don't know. But there's so many frustrations with the way this game ended because yet again, we've done a wee silly mistake because we had the ball in the corner originally, but then for whatever reason, we start playing it out. Then we've got a free kick with a minute to go and we take a quick free kick. Why? Why, why take a quick free kick here? Does this make any freaking sense? Eventually, the ball goes to the halfway line and Kamar Roof tries to score again from the halfway line or kick out, whatever he's trying to do here. But again, why? There's literally 40 seconds to go. Hold on to the ball. We've got a break. Run into the corner. See the game out. We we'll snatch the win. Let's go home. Very happy. But he tries to have a shot. St. Johnson go long. Surprise, surprise. And it goes to Bassey here. And Bassey's too weak. In the air, I love the guy on the ground, they can boss everybody, but by God is he bad in the air. He does it into the box, and now I think it's Kane here, who a minute before, by the way, was actually booked for diving. So that probably shows you where they were kind of at in terms of the game, or in terms of flopping in and around the box. Just fresh from a yellow card for diving, and then headers the ball, falls onto the ground, and then gets a penalty. Yep. I don't... Have a Scooby-Doo. Why this was given. I seen the commentary try to say, oh, Simpsons kicked him or something. But even for the angle I saw, it didn't look at it. But I guess if you've had four penalty shouts 
in a game and you've literally just been booked for diving. He's not going to book him again for diving. Maybe the referee's shit fear because everything and he's lost control of the game. He gives this one a penalty kick and then Liam Craig steps up and he makes no doubt about it. It's a brilliant penalty kick, by the way. Even McLaughlin dives the right way. But to be fair to him, it's a fantastic finish from the spot and that makes it 1-1 which you probably look at it and say St. Johnson deserved it but I don't know the way that actually happened like if the one in the 86th minute happened that was given as a penalty I'd probably be right that doesn't feel right that's not a penalty to me but okay fair enough it does actually touch his arm okay give the penalty kick but the way this one's given just leaves me absolutely baffled and it just confuses me mere and mere about the game, I didn't understand the laws of football, I didn't understand referees, I didn't understand the consistency, there might have been three penalties given the night, there might have been zero, but I, I, I don't know what the referees think, I don't know what the referees doing, ladies and gentlemen, but St. Johnson do score, and that makes it 1-1, and that is the game recap right there, which again, does feel annoying, it's made of a gut punch because it's a last minute goal and a last minute equaliser, and always kind of things, but again, we got through the game, we gave people valuable minutes, we gave people opportunities and chances to impress, some did, some certainly never, and we go into the cup quarterfinal having seen our opposition with our own eyes now, seen their best team, see how they play, see how they line up, see how they are going to try and play against us, now we can put our pieces in place, we can put our best team out there and go, right, we know exactly what we're facing now, we have four days to prepare, let's go out and unleash the Hounds of War. That's me, ladies and gentlemen. It's late. I'll wrap up today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video enough to be sharing your opinions down below. And if I've got the penalty incidents wrong, just tell me. Because, let's be fair, I probably have. <laughs> but until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you didn't mean hitting the like button and hitting that subscribe button, it helps the channel out so, so much, especially the like. So any help would be greatly appreciated. But until the next video, take care of yourselves. All the best and bye.